this is example seven in our sequences and series topic. We've looked at arithmetic sequences and series. We're now going to have a look at geometric sequences and series. So what's the difference? Uh, the difference is the way in which the terms develop. Instead of there being a constant difference, so the, the sequence is increasing uh, by a fixed amount each time or decreasing by a fixed amount, this time we're looking at, at sequences where there's a multi common multiplier. It's uh, it's increasing by a multiple each time. And therefore, uh, the difference between each one is actually a, a multiplier. So in a geometric sequence, the ratio of each term to the previous term is a constant. In other words, if we divide one term by the one before it, we get R, the common ratio. Uh, so in other words, uh, here's a few examples of uh, geometric uh, sequences. We've got 1, 2, 4, 8, where there is... Uh, we're multiplying by 2 each time. Uh, we can check that just by doing this kind of r is equal to 2 divided by 1, which is 2. Or we could say 8 divided by 4. Any term divided by the preceding term will give you the same ratio. And then the second one, of course, getting smaller. It's dividing by 10 each time or multiplying by 1 tenth. So r is, the second term is 1 divided by the first term, r is a tenth, and we could get the same answer uh, with any pair of terms, okay? So that's our geometric uh, sequence. Um, we can be a wee bit more formal and say the ratio is un plus 1 over un. So it doesn't matter how far up the sequence it is, as long as they are consecutive terms we can find the ratio, or we can make a little equation like that with it. And it maybe comes in handy later on. Um, so what we want to do is to define the nth term formula, as we did for an arithmetic series. So we could say if A is the first term in a sequence, as it was before, uh, then we can say that, uh, let me to see if we can make this appear, that U1 is equal to A. The first term is we're going to call A. The second term, therefore, is going to be A multiplied by R, the common ratio. The third term is going to be A multiplied by R times R again. So that's AR squared. The fourth term uh, is going to be AR cubed. So let's generalize that. It means that if we wanted to make it UN, the nth term, look at the difference between the n term N and the power. It's one less each time, isn't it? So we can say here uh, that u to the 5, uh, that so un, the nth term, is a multiplied by r to the power n minus 1. And that is our formula for the nth term of a geometric sequence. Is it a wee spelling mistake there? Did you notice? I didn't notice that before. Geometric, apologies, sequence. Okay, so we can use that uh, to answer a question like this. Here is, in fact, uh, a rule for the uh, nth term. I could, s it could as well. It doesn't say, but um, it could say un equals, or it could just say that's the rule. We can notice here we want the first five terms, so we can map that out. The f first multiplier there is a. This is r. So the the ratio of this geometric sequence is two thirds and the first term is 3. That gives us a good starting point. There's two ways you can do this. Uh, you can either substitute in n for each one. So I'll, I'll show you that. Okay. So we could uh, do it by substitution all the time. So we know that the first term, when n equals 0, 2 thirds to the power 0 is 1. Therefore, we could say that u1 is 3. Well, we know that anyway because it's the, the term up here. If I want to find u2, well, n is 2, so I could say it's 3 multiplied by 2 thirds to the power of n minus 1, which would be 1. So it's 3 multiplied by 2 thirds, which is 3. For the third term, I could say it's 3 multiplied by 2 thirds to the power of 3, um, three minus 1 is 2, which gives us 3 multiplied by... 2 thirds squared, 2 squared is 4, 3 squared is 9. Um, that gives us 12 over 9, or 4 thirds. But as we go on, I'll do one more, even though it, you can see that it's going to be a problem uh, if as we start to increase the powers. So technically we could do this, 
Um, but it's going to get a little bit hairy. I've got two cubed is eight, three cubed is 27. Uh, the three and the, the, the 27 cancel out, which would give me eight nines. It's not undoable, but the, the nth term rule isn't really designed for working out consecutive terms. It's good to drop in. If you know a value of n, substitute it in and work it out. If you're doing it from the start, it is much easier just to... Um, use the previous term okay use previous term so i'm going to show you how to get the same answers a wee bit quicker we know that u1 is still three because that's our first value here and all we need to do is to say u2 is going to be the previous term three multiplied by r which is two thirds which is still two. Oh, i made a mistake up there you can see that and u3 is the previous term, which is 2, again multiplied by r, which is 2 thirds, which is 4 thirds, which is what we agreed up there. u5, u4 rather, is the previous term, 4 thirds, multiplied by 2 thirds, which is 8 ninths, which we agreed. And u5 is the previous term, u4, multiplied by 2 thirds which is 16 over 27, okay? Now, find the first five terms. We wouldn't normally leave them kind of stranded like that. We can write them down nice and neat neatly. First five terms is 3, 2, 4 thirds, 8 ninths, and 16 over 27. Oops, excuse my writing there. Okay, so actually rewrite them. Don't just leave them hanging as different terms. Uh, write them as a sequence with commas. So two ways of working out values. If you're starting from the beginning, just keep multiplying through by r. But if you're dropping a value in to find un uh, somewhere, obviously just use substitution. Okay, I hope that's helpful. Uh, we can go on and do a, a few more examples using geometric sequences and series.